What's going on guys, Vlad with eeenthusiast.com here and today we're going to be doing a project which is based on a video that I did uh, quite a while ago, a year or so, in which I demonstrated a way to control a servo motor and essentially have this functionality in which you can record the position of the servo which you can use in many you know, different cases such as a robotic arm. And essentially, you have three different sequences, the first one being this kind of free range mode where you can move the servo back and forth between the 180 degrees, very easy to implement. And then once you press the button that's uh, on this breadboard right here, the servo goes into this memory state remembrance mode in which uh, what it does essentially is every... Um, every timestamp it records the position of the servo and then in the third mode once you're done with the recording you're essentially going through the loop of the servo repeating the same motions that you did um, so the big difference between the previous video and this one is that i got some e external ee prom chips and instead of writing directly to the arduino i'm recording all of these movements onto the ee prom chip through i squared c and what that allows us to do is essentially is a lot is to have not only one motor, not two, but essentially an infinite or quote unquote infinite number of motors uh, chained in the same way. And uh, it doesn't eat up a lot of memory like uh, I did in the previous program by saving it externally. So essentially it uh, allows us to uh, have a much greater kind of resolution on these motors as well. And uh, without any further delay, let's jump into a quick demo of this build. So bringing your attention to the servo motor, as you can see, it is currently in the first state, which allows me to just sweep between zero and 180 degrees. Not extremely uh, impressive, but let's press the button and start creating some sequences. So if I press the button and I slowly move from zero to 180, as an example, then I jerk the motor back and forth, then I slowly go back to 90 degrees and then return back to 180, and then slowly go back to the initial position as an example, and then let's say go back to the mid position. And uh, the servo goes into the third state after 200 readings, that's the current limit that I have set up. And as you can see, it's currently repeating exactly the same motions that I've uh, implemented on it. And the very interesting thing is, like I said, there's this uh, very uh, elusive IC down here, which is where I'm storing all the data. So it's an 8-pin PDIP uh, EEPROM chip, which we're going to be connecting. I'm going to be explaining all the pinouts. And uh, essentially what I'm doing is I'm writing the data as I move in the second sequence, and then I read the data back uh, in order to reproduce the motion. So essentially we're not storing any of the data on the Arduino itself. Everything sto is stored externally. And this allows you to expand uh, essentially to more servo motors if you desire to do so, which is essentially what you would want to do, right? You don't want to just uh, eat up the data with one servo motor on your Arduino. So let's take a look at the wiring. Let's take a look at the software. Super cool project. Hope you guys like it. And if you do, make sure to hit the thumbs up button below. So connection wise, we have quite a few things going on. Uh, the first thing that we're going to cover is the I squared C communication with the EEPROM chip. So uh, most of my pins here are grounded. So five of them are grounded. Three of them are addressable pins which essentially dictate the address of our chip i'm going to be showing you in the software where exactly that is uh two of the pins are going back to a a4 and a5 which is the i squared c bus for the arduino uh communication and uh there's two resistors that are very important uh two pull-up resistors of 10k each so make sure you have that on your buses because uh obviously this is not a breakout board this is the e prom chip itself so it requires those pull-ups to function correctly um what else do we have so we have a button and a button is essentially if i trace the cable back it goes to pin um eight so nothing particular about that button it's grounded when pressed and then i have a potentiometer which control which is essentially an analog read and that's going to go back to a3 and uh, it's just a voltage divider between 5 volts and ground. And uh, I'm using that to send the data to the servo, which we're going to see in a second. The next thing we have is the motor itself. So the servo motor is currently positioned on pin 9. So in case you're not familiar with the Arduino too much, you need to have the squiggly line next to the uh, pin number if you want to be able to output a PWM signal, which is what uh, servos are actually using. 
Uh, so make sure to position it on one of those. In my case, like I said, it is on pin nine. Um, the other thing that's very important to notice is that I have an external power supply, uh, which I'm using for the servo motor. And that allows me to essentially eliminate uh, the current spikes on the Arduino board. Uh, when I'm reading analog voltages, what I've got, what I've gone through essentially is a lot of uh, issues and I've determined by you know reading some data sheets and essentially reading the data on a oscilloscope that there is a lot of interference when the motor is going back and forth in terms of reading the analog signals so what i have essentially is a 24 volt power supply that's going off the mains you can buy these for uh it should be 10 to 20 bucks on amazon or ebay and then that's coming in here 24 volts and then i'm using a uh, step down converter which brings that voltage down to uh, 5 volts which is suitable for this particular servo type um, and again these circuits are grounded together and uh, yeah so you get the voltage for the servo and the signal is coming from the arduino so hopefully that makes sense for you guys um, uh, the circuit is not extremely complicated, but just by uh, looking at the cables, it could be a little bit overwhelming. So if you have any questions, make sure to post them down below. All right, so now let's go to the fun part, which is the software. And uh, just a little warning, there's obviously a lot of different ways that you can write this and a lot of, you know, maybe neater ways that you can write this. And uh, essentially, it's a proof of concept that you... Uh, would apply to your projects and you can obviously make it better make um, add different functions But uh, let's go through it and kind of see my own implementation and what uh, it does So the first thing obviously is including the servo The servo.h library is going to be driving the servo very useful uh, part of the Arduino suite So servo my servo is going to be my uh, implementation of the servo and then I have two bytes of my servo angle and my servo angle read so I'm using them separately because I, I want to write and then I wanted to retrieve a different byte address to compare just to be sure that everything is good. Uh, I'm in including the wire.h library, which is going to be allowing me to communicate with the EEPROM chip and the address is going to be 50. And once again, this comes from the data sheet. I'll put a link on your screen right now, but essentially uh, because I have the three pins pulled low, that is going to be my address long last right um so i'm going to be declaring a couple of ints you know constants longs i'm going to briefly describe what they do but we're going to get into the details later um essentially what i'm going to be doing is polling every 100 milliseconds so i want to store the current time on the arduino into this uh long and then be able to reference that every uh time a reading is due essentially and then the right pointer so this is the initial pointer at which I begin writing on the EEPROM chip. The write limit is how many readings total I want to take. So obviously this value can be adjusted. Right now it's sitting at 200, so that's 200 times 100 milliseconds. Um, but you can, you can make this whatever you want uh, for your own project. You can make it more or less. You could also cut down the time and kind of you know, have smaller sequences of your readings if you desire to do so, depending on what precision you're looking for. Uh, analog pin. So my analog pin is on A3. As I've mentioned, it is connected uh, right here to the potentiometer. Number of inputs. I have I have only one button. Uh, all of this code pretty much comes from a tutorial I did on advanced button control, and it allows me to the bounds a different number of inputs. In this case, I only have one button, and I decided decided to copy paste it anyways. But you can extend this code to uh, debounce five buttons, ten buttons, however many you need. Um, so very versatile sort of uh, piece there. Uh, in the setup function, so as always, I'm going to initialize the input pins and I'm going to put a pull-up resistor on the, uh, on the button uh, by calling out this function. And then uh, serial that begins. So I used a lot of serial functions to debug my code. I highly recommend you implement that yourself and insert sort of breakpoints uh, because it did help me a lot. I had a lot of trouble with, um, I actually didn't initialize my wire library at first and just couldn't get the data back from the EEPROM. So um, very, very useful to have that serial dot begin in there. 
And then my servo dot attach nine. So that's a function through the uh, servo library. And that essentially tells the Arduino that I'm, I am going to be using a servo on pin nine and wire dot begin is I squared C communication, which we're going to be using for the E prom once again, scrolling down to our loop function. So I have three different uh, distinct sets of activities that need to happen. So the first one is the input flags. So that's just checking the button. Once again, that's from the previous video, I explained how that works. Then we resolve the input flags and we resolve the outputs. Uh, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, I'll put a link uh, as a relevant video down below if you guys want to check this out. But essentially, it's uh, debouncing my button, and then figuring out what was uh, pressed and uh, resolving that uh, state. But resolve outputs is essentially the most important function in this uh, particular program. And uh, like I mentioned, it has three different states, right? So there's case one, case two and case three. Um, so first, first thing first, what I do is I always read uh, the angle. So this angle is coming out of the analog read a three. So it's checking the potentiometer, and then it's mapping uh, this analog read from being 1023 down to 180 because the servo is only able to receive the servo through this library is only able to receive a position from zero to 180 degrees. Um, so you need to be within that range unless you want to have something um, funky happen in your program, it's going to loop back essentially on itself. And then as I switch that input, uh, right, so it's the number of presses that my button has been pressed. So at the first case, uh, all I'm doing, like I said, is just writing the angle, right? So whatever, whatever the potentiometer is set to is whatever I'm going to write as uh, onto my motor. So nothing, nothing extraordinary going on there. Um, in case two, so as soon as the button is pressed, what I'm going to be doing is first of all, I'm still going to be writing uh, the angle. So nothing, nothing changes there, because I want to see the movement of my motor as I'm uh, executing this function. But uh, what I begin doing is essentially checking my timers, right? So if my last write, uh, if the difference between the current time and the last time I wrote in a value is greater than 100 milliseconds, meaning that 100 milliseconds have passed since the last write, what I'm going to do is record the current state of the motor, right? So um, if for example, uh, let's say this is zero degrees, and then I move by, uh, let's say this is 45 degrees, within 100 milliseconds, then I'm going to store that value in my register. And the way this is done is write address, write pointer. So the pointer, if you remember, it's zero. And essentially, all it's uh, responsible for is telling me which address pointer to write to. And in that address pointer, I'm going to write the address or the angle of my motors, right? So I'm going to start with the pointer zero, and then write, let's say, uh, 180 degrees, and then 100 milliseconds later, I'm going to record again, 176 degrees, 150 degrees, and then, etc, uh, etc, et cetera, until I have uh, my limit. But essentially, um, each time that I write, I increment the pointer. So I go to the next address on the EE prom. And uh, I keep on going. So let's take a look at this right address function. So the right address function is going to be down below and it takes the address as well as a value um, of the uh, position of the motor in our case in order to write to the EE prom. And the way this is done is we begin transmission on this on this address. And this uh, address has been explained before 0x50. Then we write the address shifted by eight bits, as well as the address ended with zero X F F. And essentially, uh, you always need to write two bytes as an address in the most significant bit and the least significant bit for your EEPROM. And then uh, what you need to do is write the value, uh, which is the angle, like I've mentioned a couple of times, and then we end transmission. So essentially, like I said, at each and every pointer, going from zero, one, two, three, four, five, etc. we are going to write an angle value for the motor. And that's pretty much how that uh, function works. So after we're done writing, like I said, we're doing some serial prints, uh, just to make sure you know, whatever we send is correct and makes sense. And then the pointer is incremented because we want to write in the uh, in the next step, essentially, and the last right. So the current the current right as it occurred, we're going to store that in the uh, last right integer. 
And then uh, what happens is if the right pointer is greater the, than the right limit, which as I've mentioned before, you can change on top for your particular programs. Uh, we're gonna set the counter. So essentially you don't need to press the button another time. We're gonna set the input counter to three and we're gonna write uh, the pointer. So we're gonna reset the pointer to start back at the beginning. And that's pretty much it for case two. So very simple uh, write routine, which records the position of the motor every 100 milliseconds or um, any time based on this value. In the third case, right? So after we've done, after we've completed the recording, what we do is if uh, we need to read back from the EE prom and essentially send the motor to the correct position once the 100 milliseconds have elapsed every single time. And uh, the code is very similar. Uh, so what I'm doing is essentially if 100 milliseconds have elapsed since the last time we've sent the motor to a certain position, I'm going to read. So I'm going to initialize the my servo angle read and it's going to be equivalent to read address the right pointer. So remember, the pointer is currently at zero. So it's going to it's going to read first the first value, then the second one and so on and so forth. But uh, let's look at the read address function for just a second if we scroll on down. So the read address, we instantiate an R data uh, register, which is going to be uh, essentially all filled up with ones, then we begin transmission. And uh, the address has not changed, it's the same address, then we write the address from which we want to read. And this is again, this is dictated by the pointer. Um, then we end the transmission and then we request. So we request the data from that particular address and we request one byte of data, which is exactly what we wrote before. And uh, the, the data is going to be returned to us in byte form. And we can now use it up here where so if we read the address pointer, we store it in this my servo angle reads, and then we write that to the servo. And of course, we want to go through all the pointers, so we're going to increment that accordingly and um, uh, reset the millis once again, the last write millis. And if the right pointer right at, reached its limit, which uh, in my case is 200, 200, then you reset it back to zero. And that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much the entire program. So it's very simple, uh, yet extremely powerful and can be, uh, you know, transformed into any kinds of projects, you can add an LCD screen. Uh, this is actually something that I'm thinking about adding a menu where you can select, you know, record uh, servo motions, and then you begin that and it shows you what you're recording, what the position is, that way it makes it a lot easier to kind of uh, see and understand and apply to different projects. But, but uh, let's go through another demonstration. Let's actually uh, save this program and load it onto the board once again, just to make sure everything is good. And let's go through a quick demo. So the best way to demonstrate this uh, sequence, of course, is to create a random uh, you know, motion with the servo and then see uh, if it's being repeated. So let's treat this as position zero. I'm gonna create a a uh, random sequence and we're going to go through it and see how well it's uh, being recorded. So first I'm going to do a slow sweep from 0 to 180 Then I'm going to do a sweep back very slowly and then I'm going to do a fast one back and forth and then I'm going to create this sort of random motion and I'm going to slowly come back and then I'm going to go to the other side and kind of create this motion as well. And um, so let's see uh, how the sequence is repeating. So the first sweep very slow back and forth, then it should be a faster sweep right there. And then we're going to create this random motion going back and forth. Um, and then it should create one more of those. As you can see, so the program is essentially repeating in a sequence exactly what we've done. And this is uh, extremely powerful because I'm planning to use this in a robotic arm essentially where I would have four different motors and then you could teach the arm to do whatever you want. And then the arm uh, would just be repeating the same motions over and over, which is very common to uh, something like a manufacturing environment per se. Uh, so very cool project. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way I was, uh, I was using the EEPROM chip. It's something that I got uh, and unboxed very recently. So uh, hopefully you guys make some projects using these 
uh, very versatile, very uh, useful. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any more questions or confusions. And as always, the code is going to be available on my GitHub page. So make sure to check it out. Make sure to copy it for your project and uh, use it accordingly. Thank you guys for watching. Take care. Bye. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you've enjoyed the content, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. I also want you to check out the description and a couple of links that I left for you with uh, extra content. Last but not least, leave me a comment if you have any suggestions for next videos, questions about this topic or otherwise. Uh, thank you once again for watching and see you next time.